Uh, I'll start off by saying um, I, I know how to handle and how to deal with uh, a piece of information here that clearly ruined my life and my family's life and everybody's life in, in around me. Um, and in here, you would see that the labeling that I was labeled, imminent threat, linked through association to Al-Qaeda that the RCMP used, they did it without, and the words, um, it's not their own investigation, and they use somebody else's information to do this. This is paragraph 11, page 400. Yet, at the end as well, which is even worse, the labeling was not even about myself. Well, let me read that. Uh, this, the description appears to have originated from another source. However, this source used, this, this, uh, used these descriptions in respect of other individuals and not in respect to Mr. Al-Malki. So my life has been ruined, my reputation has been ruined. For all these years, I lost my business based on information basically that didn't even relate to me. I mean, it's just outrageous to me uh, how, how this would be. And I would point, you, point out as well another place, and I haven't had a chance to read the whole report, but another place, uh, page 197, and you would find that the RCMP wanted to arrest me, uh, and they wanted to use the excuse of preach of peace, not because they, won't, they were going to prosecute me or charge me, but just they wanted to arrest me to question me. Why didn't the RCMP, who they were following me and ruined, you know, made my life hell so that we need to go and my wife and I couldn't stay in Can you know, we, we, we needed a break and left to, to Malaysia. Why didn't they come and ask for an interview? Why would they need to go and use an excuse when they know they can't detain me on any basis in order to question me? Another, another thing which I think uh, I've been saying it for years, and this confirms this report, the RCMP fully knew that I would be tortured if they sent questions. They sent it anyway. Now, does it make a difference if, if, if Justice Jakob, which is uh, said directly or indirectly? Well, apparently directly means that you know, the Canadian official would be the one holding the whip. Well, it does make a difference if it was a Syrian official holding the whip and squeezed me into tire or hanged me or did everything that happened to me when the information he was used to interrogate me on originated, originated in Canada. I mean, is this direct complicity or not direct complicity? I leave it to the lawyers and to the... But had it not been for that information sent, I would not have been tortured, and I think this is a simple fact. The RCMP sent information to Syria in October, way before, October 2001, labeling me again in the inaccurate labeling that has baseless that I was imminent threat. What did they expect the Syrians to do? You know, pass through the, the border and get me and, you know, nothing happens. And what difference does it make? Today the minister, he said, well, there is a huge difference between my case and our cases and Mr. Arar's case, that we went to see it voluntarily. Well, Mr. Arar went to the States voluntarily as well. But I think the, the important thing is that in all our cases, we would not have been, we were detained based on Canadian information. I mean, the Americans detained Mr. Arau on Canadian information. We were today, you know, it's, it's, it's a Canadian day, I think, which we have been fighting for a long time. I, I think I'm, I'm outraged as well by the government. They put their limitation on to, to further our um, suffering by not stepping up to the plate and saying, we did mistakes, we labeled you wrongly, apologize. And, uh, and the fact that they even initially and thought that they do not want a clear statement, clear in our names, even though when you find that it was totally baseless. It just outraged me, and I think the government should, you know, step up to the plate and do the right thing. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. First, I want to extend my appreciation for your presence here today and my appreciation and thanking to all the Canadian citizens that support our case for these years. Clearly, this report shows that I was detained and tortured as a result of the Canadian security officials' action. I was labeled in a way that was inaccurate and unreliable. My, la my life was ruined, my parents getting elder, and I can't travel back home to see my parents. I want the government to apologize. I, I want me to able to build my life again as normal as any Canadian citizen. I want to see accountability 
to make sure this would never happen to any other Canadian. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My mother is here with me today. This uh, has destroyed her too. We got some answers today, but we still need an apology. I know who was responsible now, and Canada knows I was tortured. Canada knows the information about me was wrong. This is a good news for me. Now we wait to see what the government had to say. Do you think uh, that uh, somewhat, someone somewhere tried to protect the RCMP? Well, look at their statements and their public statements. Uh, look at when I was in jail. They told my lawyer that they had nothing to do with my detention. And look at what we have now. Uh, when I came back, and, I, uh, and the chronology which initially was printed, and a lot of you, I think, have it, um, the government and my lawyer's correspondence initially when I came back, even before I went public with the government, they denied having anything to do with my detention. I mean, why all that cover up? Why can't, you know, from the beginning, you know, if we don't want to acknowledge mistakes and repair them, and do we have to fight and put our lives, you know, f further suffering, after suffering for 22 months of in order to find the truth? And I don't believe we got the full truth yet. We got a lot, but, you know, the, the inquiry has been far from being fair to us and far from being comprehensive. Our side of the story has not been heard. Uh, but even with what we have today, I think it's, it's, it's extremely damaging to the RCMP and CSOs. The RCMP, I would, I would remind you back in September, I believe, or October 2006, the RCMP commissioner, when he was asked during a uh, uh, parliamentary committee hearing, I think, uh, and he was asked if he would apologize to me, Ahmed M. Wayed, and he said no. Uh, clearly, they were behind our torture. Yet he, at that time, he refused, and as if he had nothing to do with it, as if the RCMP had nothing to do with what uh, it, was It's just appalling, the, that information, and how Canada is treating its own citizens um, in, in a way that, that's beyond, uh, I mean, I expected a lot of things, but it, it's, it's beyond belief. Graham Richardson, CTV. Mr. Romati, uh, we read today that uh, that CSIS, Mr. Yagabuchi says that CSIS's uh, decision to send supplementary questions uh, would greenlight their interrogation and perhaps the torture. Do you believe you were tortured over questions sent by Canada? I don't believe. I know for sure I was tortured because of questions were sent by Canada. The major, major important thing for us is that in, in the whole fight uh, on, on a number of issues, the first one is to clear our names and to have accountability. The second and the third is not to see this happening to any other Canadian or any other human being. Now today, I mean, effectively what we have here in, in the report and the information we have, it clears our names. When the basis of the labeling and all these things, if, if Justice Iacapucci stopped short of clearing our names because he, he's, you know, he's interpreting his mandate so strictly, but clearly, I mean, when there is no, when there are no bases, when, there are, when they want to make up a charge, preach of peace in order to detain me, to question me because they can't even charge me in any case, I mean, clearly vindicates us, it clearly clears our names, and that's something very, you know, it's something that we want. We, however, we would still like, I mean, we, to issue a public apology. I mean, when Canadian citizens are treated in the way we were treated, uh, tortured in the most severe methods you, a human being can imagine, uh, certain torture methods beyond the imagination of human beings, some of them I could still, until today, six years after I've been tortured, there are certain things in tor about torture I can't even talk about yet. Uh, you know, I think the right thing is, is to, to issue a public apology and not to, you know, just uh, push it around and play politics. I think the politics now should be put aside. And we are three individual human beings. We have families with us. I have, I have six kids. Uh, there is a huge number of Canadians infected by this, and I think even the general public in Canada is affected. I mean, I would think any average Canadian seeing this which should be should be alarmed and terrified when you go overseas and even the Canadian ambassador discuss interrogation access for Canadian officials and not an access to check on my well-being.